Hello everyone, this is the project screen tutorial for Gerotic Motion. It's for version 2.0, which would be released sometime around the 20th of December 2010, just in case anyone is watching this before it's released. In this tutorial, we're going to go through a little bit of detail on how to create a uh, simple mechanism or two as an example of how to use the project screen in general. So let's imagine that we want to create a project here, and let's start by going to the spur screen which is the normal screen that you'll use for most of the gears, I believe. Um, on the design screen, the one on the left we always call the master, and the one on the right is always called the slave, the small one here, the pinion. Um, we call the master and slave simply as an arbitrary way of identifying which one we're dealing with at the time. Now, as per our example, I'm going to uh, take this master up to 30 teeth, and I'm going to take the slave to 12 teeth, just to make it a bit smaller and hit the Regen button to Regen them. Now I'm going to add the small s uh, gear to the screen by saying Add Slave to Project because the one on the right, as I said, is the slave. Now we're presented with a screen asking us what kind of spur gear we want and in addition to having an ordinary spur where you can just say OK and add it, uh, you can select bevels or helicals and so on. Now I'm going to select a bevel this time, a helical bevel and left-handed. As a rule, I tend to make the slave gear are left-handed and the master gear right-handed when I'm dealing with bevels just so I'll know when I'm placing a gear whether I need a right or left-handed because bevel gears uh, have to be right and left-hand matched if you use helix or zero-all type gears. Straight gears it wouldn't make any difference. So anyway let's add this gear to the screen by hitting OK and as you can see we now have a small bevel gear. Now since we're making a little machine, let's add a, a gadget to it so we can keep it straight in our mind where things are. If we hit the Ratchets and Gadgets screen, on the right hand side you'll see we only have two gadgets at the moment. One is a graphic for a crank handle and it can be helpful to add one just to keep your mind uh, in tune as to where things are on the screen as you design. You'll notice as I point the mouse on the screen, now that we're in a selection mode where it's asking us to place our handle, if I point at this gear it'll be blue saying that it's selected. If I point to the center of its shaft, you can see it turns pink and that means I'm selecting its shaft, not the gear. Now alternately I can point to the project tree up here in the corner of the left and I could select shaft by pointing to shaft or I could select the bevel by pointing to the bevel. In this particular case, I'm going to select the shaft to place our handle. And as you can see, now that I've selected it, it's automatically flipped the screen to an orientation that will show me where I'm going to place this handle. I'm going to place it up here in the front of the uh, mechanism for the heck of it. And now, as you can see, we have a uh, small bevel gear with a handle. If I roll my mouse, I can zoom that in or out, and if I hold both most mouse buttons down at the same time, I can pan it around the screen. So I'm just going to center that and zoom it to that stage. Uh, if I simulate, now we can move, but it's a pretty boring simulation, so let's add, let's add something to the mix. Let's go to the spur gears and select a master, and select a bevel again and a helix, and I won't select left hand because I already did that for the pinion and a 90 degree shaft angle. When I hit OK, we're now back in selection mode. And as you can see, if I point to the gear, it's blue. If I point to the center, it's pink. Uh, the handle itself can also be selected, but there's nothing you can place on a handle, so it's not worthwhile. So let's select the blue gear and click it. And when I click it, our large bevel uh, now shows up in an easy select manner on the plane of the first gear. And we can roll it around. The gear will snap at 90 degree angles and so on. If you get close to 90, you'll find it's pretty easy to select 90. And we click to set it. When we click, a bevel will automatically flip down into proper plane. And as you can see, we have two helical bevels and a handle. And if we hit the front button, we can look at them from the front. And there is our simulation. We can turn crank, and we can see the gears turn. We can speed up the simulation at the top of the screen with the speed slider. You can also hit reverse to make uh, your gears go backwards. You can also select periodic and select an angle and what that will do is make the gears roll forward for a period of 90 degrees currently set and then roll backwards. And that's handy if you have a device which can only do so much work in one direction and then needs to be reversed and it would show a simulation of a person cranking the crank one way and then cranking the crank another. So 
let's add another gear to this screen. Um, let's add another bevel for the heck of it. We'll go to the master and we'll select a bevel and let's go with a zero all gear and a 90 degree shaft angle. When we hit OK we're back in selection and as you can see as I move my mouse around the screen I don't need to click anything. I can select the handle, I can select the small pinion, its shaft, large bevel, or by pointing to the center of its shaft I can select uh, the shaft for the large bevel. Let's do that and place this gear here. Now we have two large bevels. Be nice if the, uh, that top bevel was pointing another way. So if we look up at the screen we'll see we have bevel 1, 3, and 4. Obviously the last one we placed is number 4 and if we click it we'll see all the data on that gear as well as the gear itself. Now by right clicking on that bevel we'll see that there's a new menu item. Reverse bevel face direction. This reverses the normal of that bevel and we now have uh, two bevels which are opposing each other. Now let's put a pinion on that bevel for the heck of it. Again we'll leave it at 90 degrees so that they match and we'll go to a zero all gear and we'll need left handed because we're mesh meshing with a right handed bevel. We hit OK and we're back in our selection screen. We can just make this gear that we intend to place to blue, click it, and we can roll our gear around. The screen will always flip to the plane which is necessary for you to most easily place a gear. This may not be always true and while we're rolling this gear around before I click I am free to go to different views so that I can see how that gear is going to place. I can look at it from the top, the left, an ISO view or wherever. As you can see the other gears on the screen have gone almost completely transparent. The only two gears which are in full display are the two gears that you're dealing with. Now we'll roll this gear off to the side away from the handle and select zero degrees and as you can see on the screen we have a gear uh, placement angle. Once it hits zero I can click and that gear will tuck up and be a proper bevel gear ready to operate. Now you can drag any gear off of any shaft so we could add a standard spur gear for example. I'll just select a spur and without changing anything hit OK which means a normal spur and when the gear is created I can point to the center of this uh, pinions shaft and when it turns pink it means I'm coming off the shaft so I'll drag it. Now here you can see very well that the other gears are very transparent while this gear is uh, nice and static so that you can see it. And again now we have our machine. Now for the heck of it let's add another spur gear to that and we'll just say OK and once it creates the gear again, we'll mesh with this gear sideways. And now you can see that we're placing sideways. You can see the uh, transparent crank. And we can place that gear at any angle we wish. The shafts are automatic and we'll attach the objects. And everything will simulate just the way it would um, if they were connected. Now you might want to have a, um, a hand on one of these as a position pointer. Sometimes when you go too fast in Gearotica, uh, it can be hard to tell what the gears are doing. Adding a position indicator can really solve that for you. And here you can see I just placed it like the clock, like the hands of a clock. Now again, here's another special menu item. If you right-click that on the menu tree, you'll see Adjust Indicator Pointer. We can now adjust the indicator pointer, point it in any direction we want, make it as long as we wish. There, we'll drag it right out there. And as you can see, when we simulate it shows nicely which direction we're actually pointing and for those familiar with the stroboscopic effect of going too fast in garotic motion where the speed tends to make you think the gears are missing you'll find when you make garotic go too fast now the indicator actually gives a better uh, indication that the gears are staying in mesh and that the seemingly impossible um, gear motion where they appear to be going backwards is really just an artifact um, due to the strobing motion of the screen. And that basically is how you build a um, small mechanism. Things have changed with version 2 where we are now in full 3D. You can, for example, put two bevels and make them 45 degrees apart. If I was to take a, uh, let's take our two bevels and move them both down to 12 tooth bevels. And let's add one master to the project. And we'll select a bevel we'll make it helical and we'll make it a 45 degree angle. 
Now that it's created, we'll drop it on the shaft of the large bevel here and make sure you watch carefully because now, as you can see, um, our handle is above us up in this area. So we wanted this to be lower, so we'll lower it down like that to put it at the top. Now that gear is actually facing the wrong way, so we're going to find the last bevel in the run, which was bevel 9 on our numbers, and we'll reverse its direction. As you can see, it just flipped up. That was the master. Let's add a slave. It was a bevel, helical. We'll select left hand because we want to mesh with a right hand bevel, and select 45 degrees. The gear is created. We'll select that gear, and we can place it, let's place it um, sideways to our handle right there. And as you can see that gear is now meshed in at 45 degrees to our uh, mechanism and we can drop anything onto those shafts. Let's take a non-circular gear. Um, let's add the master. Simply, correct, simply uh, create it. Drop it onto the center of this bevel shaft. And as you can see the machine has oriented itself strangely so always be careful it's trying to give you the best representation of how to place it but you should always look carefully to make sure that you know where you're placing something and there we have it in this case our bevel at 45 degrees now because of all the angles that you can make in this program it can get very confusing as to what's going on uh, mind you that's half the fun and one of the most important things about this program is to have a bit of fun. Now one thing about the um, screens now and the shafts, it used to be when you created output uh, from the output manager you would get two side plates, basically a front and a back plate, which represented the shafts. And while Gearotic will not give you drill hole locations for a slanted offset angular shaft such as this one here, it will give you shaft plates for a machine. If you look at it from the front, you will get a front plate which will encompass all shafts going straight in and out of the screen, a side plate which represents the shafts going side to side on the screen, and a top and bottom plate for any shafts which are going up and down on the screen. So you'll get several uh, side plate DXFs out which show you the center holes of your various shafts. Uh, at the moment, we're not yet cutting these bevel gears. That is the next job in Gearotic Motion. Uh, and very soon, you'll see that come into the options set. Hitting the solid wire button will allow you to look at things in there. You'll notice that bevel gears and helical gears tend to be quite black, however, as they are very complex objects with millions of little triangles there to obscure your screen, unlike other bevels such as the uh, helical here or, or the non-circular here which you can see is uh, quite transparent. Also another thing to take note of is bevels being so complex as a gear the more you put of them on the screen um, the more of them you have the slower you're going to be there, unless you have a very fast computer in which case it probably won't bother you at all. My computer's a little slow um, so it's perhaps worse than most people's. Um, let's add a ratchet just to uh, for the heck of it, just to show you how to put something at a sideways shaft. We create the ratchet, point to the center of our elliptical so that it turns pink, meaning we're on the shaft, and as you can see we can drop this anywhere. And there you have it, there's your machine. Thanks for watching.